Some of the following audio used in this video was edited to have no lyrics for ambiance and or renamed for the construction of a fanfiction. The following tunes are actually performed by Guns N' Roses, Black Sabbath, Aerosmith, Ozzy Osbourne, and Warrant. Original albums are owned under the label of Geffen, Vertigo, Epic, CBS of the United States, and Columbia Records. Please support the official release. Those names sound familiar. Didn't they cover a few of our songs? Chapter 5, Stage Setup. You're listening to Cloudsdale in the Morning, all the greatest classic rock hits you know and love. I'm Dee Subskull, and I'm going to give you a blast from the past. For the last time, I don't need any new clothes. Thrash said to Whiplash. The ones I usually wear are fine. Whiplash shrugged as she put on a black barrette hat to match her outfit. The band had to wear special outfits to disguise themselves from the public in order to not have any attention drawn towards them. You're such a cult, she said. We are getting outfits made by the element of generosity for Pony's sake. I mean, why would you want to continue wearing that same outfit to every concert and not get the opportunity of an outfit done by a famous mayor? <sighs> Let me spell it out for you. Black is awesome! That and the fact that this was hoof-stitched by my sister. She's far more famous than any pony to me. Well, who am I to disagree with that? I'm just saying, though. Right. Anyway, I'm wearing my play clothes today. Skipping out on stage setup today? Nah, I'm leaving after. Oh, before I forget. Whiplash's horn began to glow, and she zapped Thrash's hooves. They glowed for a few seconds, but then faded to normal. Only Pegasus ponies can walk on clouds, but this charm shall give you that ability. Sweet. What about the others? Already done. Okay, so uh, who's going with you to Ponyville? Just slide. So I'm stuck here with Rush? Well, you'll also have Shredder and Snap. So we're stuck here with Rush? Well, you could always join me. I'll be at the stage. Thrash left Whiplash's room. He'd rather be stuck with Rush than go clothes shopping. Whiplash just smiled and shook her head. It took three hours to set up lighting, instruments, programming sound equipment, and special effects. It was a good thing they got some help from the stage crew. Pegasus ponies were able to work in high places thanks to their wings. The work was done in no time. It wasn't even 8 a.m. yet. Uh, testing, one, two, three. Thrash said into the microphone. Testing Snap one, two, stood near his drums testing a testing cymbal he just screwed on. Testing, one, two, three. Shredder sat on an amp off stage, strumming his guitar. Rush was inspecting everything on stage with a clipboard and hoof. Okay, lights are set and amplifiers are on and working. Um, uh, there's got to be something else here to prepare on this there's list. There's nothing else that needs to be prepared, Rush. Stop acting so paranoid, shouted Shredder. Nonsense. If this concert is going to be good, it needs to rise above 100%. Yeah? said Snap. Well, I'm a hundred percent going back to me room to write some new lyrics. Snap strolled off the stage towards the tour carriage. Pfft, leave if you must. I'm staying here to double the perfection. And with that, he trotted off stage with the stage manager to check the sound. Well, I guess that ends our work for the day, Thrash said, putting on a red vest over his blue outfit. I'm heading down to Ponyville to check out the scene. You in? <laughs> Are you kidding? Shredder said getting up from the amp. You were up all night at that party. I'm going to bed. Ah, oh, come on. How can you sleep when there's so much to explore down there? No, you go ahead. Shredder said with a yawn. Oh, Shredder. The sound of a door was heard closing behind the stage, and Thrash just stood there alone. He trotted out of the arena as he put on his sunshades. He walked up to the nearest street and shook his hoof in the air for a taxi. Man, Man what, what a, a bunch, bunch of buzzkills, buzz he thought to himself. I really wish they came. They don't, they don't know what, what they're, they're missing. missing. A taxi carriage pulled up next to Thrash, and he sat in the seat. The yellow pegasus pulling the carriage looked back at him. Where to? He said. Ponyville. Yeah. Where specifically in Ponyville? Uh, the museum. Thrash said. It was the only place he knew off hoof. 
Ponyville Museum it is. He flew downwards towards the city below. About ten minutes later, they arrived in a small village. Thrash looked out the side window. He saw the residents trotting around shopping, working, and enjoying themselves. He just couldn't wait. The cart then shook a bit, nudging him towards the center of his seat. The driver then turned his head and shouted, What's where you're going? He then turned back to the flight path. The thick-headed ponies in this town? Why can't they just pay attention to where they're walking? Thrash said nothing and looked back out the window. The taxi arrived at a big white marble building. Thrash exited the cab and stared at it. Wow, this is bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, that'll be 75 bits, said the driver. Thrash paid him with a large silver 100-bit coin. The driver's eyes widened as he looked at it. Keep the change, said Thrash as he walked towards the museum. The driver stuffed the coin in his coat pocket and took off. The stallion, the driver said to himself, yet very familiar. Thrash approached a small flight of stairs towards the ticket booth. A light gray mare, around her fifties, sat there reading a magazine. She looked up and noticed she had a customer. Some pony who isn't dressed up all fancy or on a field trip. How interesting. She said, with no care whatsoever. Hey, how much is it to get in? Thrash said with a smile. Six bits. Oh, not bad for an admission price. You must be really popular around here. Oh, you have no idea. She said sarcastically. Thrash was too excited to notice. He paid the woman and started towards the entrance. Thrash stepped into the building. He looked at the artifacts around him in the lobby. He didn't even know where to start, so he walked over to the art gallery. is awesome. Hey guys, it's Evan. I am the writer of The Farmer and the Rocker as well as the voices of Rush and Slide. First of all, I want to thank you for watching our series. We hope you like the story so far, because there's so much more to come. Anyway, I posted two chapters this month because next month I'm working on another project, so I decided to make up for it. Oh, and if interested, I do have a Facebook for this project as well as The Farmer and the Rocker. Also, chapters 1 through 13 is posted on my DeviantArt account, so if you're anxious to know what happens next in the story, head on there. All are linked in the description box below. Also, take a look at the channels of the rest of the cast. They do some pretty talented work on YouTube. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in two months. Yay!